So we do need to consider the management, like we said before, about how we deliver whatever feed we decide to our horse. And sometimes it's not practical to be feeding them three or four times a day when we want to achieve weight gain. So we need to get a little bit savvy with the feeds that we select. And that's where some of these high fat type products and feeds come into play. Um, so there's lots of high fat sources that can be advantageous. Um, and fat is about two and a half times the calorie density of a carbohydrate source like oats. So you can actually feed more calories in a smaller volume. So if you can only get to your horse once or twice a day to feed, it's a really smart option to keep meal sizes small, maximise digestive efficiency. So when we look towards these uh, different fat products, we can obviously use a liquid oil, um, something like a canola oil, or we can feed a, a palleted high fat supplement like Equijoule. Uh, some horses don't find liquid oil very palatable, so that's where our palleted options uh, come in really, really useful. So after we've selected our feed and we're feeding it at the correct feeding rate, um, that is when we go on and we look towards supplements, if required. So supplements should be the last thing that we actually add into a horse's diet. So like we said, if we've selected the feed and we have fed it at the recommended amount, we don't need to add any additional vitamins and minerals in. However, if we're feeding below that recommended amount, that's when we need to go forward and look towards a um, balancer palette or a vitamin and mineral palette to actually um, balance that ration and make sure the horse is getting all of the vitamins and minerals that are required. I'd certainly steer clear from adding individual vitamins and minerals. Um, you know, you don't want to have to add in additional calcium and magnesium, iodine, all of those things separately. So choosing a, a balanced, good quality, balanced, high for, um, highly formulated product is definitely the way to go. There's lots of mineral imbalances when we get to the horse. Um, so calcium to phosphorus is certainly the most common one. And one thing that we do need to consider when we're feeding the off-the-track horse, if they are on a course of omeprazole, is that omeprazole does uh, affect calcium digestibility and absorption in the horse's body. So adding additional calcium, and you may do that through the addition of loosen, whether it's chaff or hay, uh, or you may do it through, um, you know, a, a calcium supplement um, like triactin. Salt. Salt is the one thing that we want to make sure that we have in every horse's diet. So normal plain white salt or pink Himalayan rock salt is uh, the way to go. And you can add that into the ration or you can have it as a salt block in the paddock um, or the stable, depending on how you're keeping those horses. So really the foundations of formulating a ration, first and foremost, is we look at the horse's water requirements. We make sure they are drinking the water source that's provided to them um, in an adequate amount. We then look towards forage. So pasture is our first choice. In the absence of pasture, we look towards hay or chaff or alternative fibre sources like beet pulp if we're trying to put weight onto a horse. Uh, then we look towards concentrates. So we can choose either an unfortified grain like oats, um, a sweet feed or a textured feed, um, a, a pellet or an extruded cube uh, and feed that according to the manufacturer's guidelines. If we dip below that, we um, have to add a vitamin and mineral supplement in. If we still need more calories on top of that, then we go to something like our Equidule. Um, which is not fully fortified, so it doesn't mix, um, muck with our vitamin and mineral uh, amounts, but it adds a lot of calories into the diet, therefore allowing meal sizes to stay very small. And then the last thing we do is we add supplements in. So probably the biggest um, piece of advice would be help to keep your costs under control, really make sure that you talk to a qualified professional. They will be able to help you with everything from your pasture to your hay, to your feed, to your supplements. And they should look at, as a, look at it as a whole picture for what you're trying to achieve with that horse, whether it is um, putting weight on, trying to build top line, um, maintaining your horse's weight or get weight off. So I thought we'd go through an example ration here of a horse, so a 500 kilo Aventa um, in moderate work. So 
Um, I've put this horse as a, as a warm blood thoroughbred cross that's worked four or five times a week um, and maintains weight usually but can get a little bit skinnier in winter, which once again is not uncommon for a thoroughbred. Um, usually gets a diet of grass hay, loose and chaff and oats um, and the owner really just wants to make sure that the diet is balanced. So. The first slide here um, shows you what happens if the horse is on a pasture and forage only diet. So you can see everything below the green line um, and all of those nutrients highlighted in red are currently deficient. So really important that if you do have a horse on a forage only diet, that's a good doer. Um, like Alan, that we did a body condition score on before, that we do put a balancer palette in or a vitamin and mineral supplement just to make sure that we lift all of these nutrients up here. And this is really important in all horses um, because these nutrients actually do a lot of things that are invisible to the eye. So if we don't feed adequate quantities of these nutrients, quite often what will happen is, you know, joints may degrade a little faster. They might have poor quality hooves, um, you know, eyesight, reproductive benefits, muscle support for the working horse. So these are all things that most of those are invisible um, and we don't see if the horse has a, a deficiency there. But we know we need to balance this. So we actually go through and add in gold pellet, which is a vitamin and mineral supplement. And you can see now that everything is balanced except for sodium and chloride. So sodium and chloride is salt. Um, so we add 30 grams of salt and the diet is balanced. Um, so you can see here for a horse in relatively good amount of work, we've got four or five ingredients in here um, and it does not need to be complex. The amount of um, supplements or ingredients that you put into a ration does not necessarily make it better. And I would certainly encourage you to select the base feed well uh, and then go from there and add anything that you need to. So in conclusion, Feeding any horse, including off the track horses, does not need to be difficult. So you follow the foundations that we've been through in this presentation. And if you need further assistance, please feel free to get in touch with us um, via our website at kr.com or our phone 1800 772 198 or email advice at kr.com. <laughs>